Hello and welcome to another week in our garden. Nice overcast day today, a massive frost this morning, but we thought we'd come round the front of the house before we go into the top greenhouse and just show you the winter planters that we planted. Now these have had 30 days of frost every morning and it faces south so we've had these bright days while we've been having the frost so it's been frozen in the morning and then sun blasted in the afternoon but just show you how the plants have reacted to that two extremes of temperature as you can see they've done quite well I'll just show you the smaller one with the two lions. Now we've popped into the top greenhouse because do a little bit of potting in the hanging pots, hanging baskets. Those pots around the front done quite well for the weather we've had on them. Now I'm going to set first some Coco de Pampau, what Benny has sent me from Norway. Now, we can't really get them in this area or in this country, so she sent me some, very kindly sent me some. She's also sent me these purple potted peas. They actually have purple flowers on, very, very nice. Now, it has a name, but there's no chance of me saying that. So Diane will pop the name on them for you. But purple podded and purple flowers. Very pretty. Now, Benny has a YouTube channel. She's in Norway. And she's a very, very good gardener. She's got a fantastic garden. So very, very worth a look. Diane will put the details on the screen for you. So you can have a look at Benny. And once again, Benny, thank you. What we're going to do, we're going to plant them in there and then grow them for stock seed only this year. We're not going to actually use any. These are for growing for seed. Let's have a look. If we put, if I put three, I think that will be, be enough. They're quite nice seeds. Look at this. Nice seed. Can work with these. If I just lay three out first. <coughs> Excuse me. I was going to put them in books, but I've also seen that I've run out of books this year. So we'll have to get some more books. Probably the bigger ones. But these will be quite happy in here. But we'll get them in and then I'll press them down about an inch. But I just wanted to see how many I could get in. If we have to change a few to four in the corners, I will. And it looks like we will. Yes, we'll have three too many, I do believe. They're nice white beans. So if we change that one to a four, and that one to a four, space them out a little, that will do. So all I'm going to do now is literally just press them down. About an inch, first knuckle, about an inch. There you go. Oops. So let me get these done and then I'll show you how to just top them up. There you are. Compost is a bit bitty eh? but it'll be fine. Just press them down, we don't want that in there. There you are. And then we'll put the label in, which is here, and I've put stop beans on them so we know not to use them there for so we can build our numbers up for next year 
I pop that to one side, I water it in a short while and when we finish the peas, the peas are purple. So that's about right, isn't it? The purple peas will be purple. See, I think we'll put them in, in threes. Try and space them if we can. Just like that, look. Again, I'm having to put them in this tray because I've no books left. But it is a, if you get these clear trays, you can, re they are recyclable trays. And they are, tend to be a bit tougher than those original thin ones. But there you are. And what I should do, when they're ready for planting, we just plant those cells in the line and put something to climb up. I do believe they're climbing bees, so they want something, a bit of support. There you go. Let me finish it. Let's them all in and now we'll just top it off with some of this compost and then we'll tidy it. And put one line on and then one layer on and then we'll squeeze them down a bit and then do another layer. I should be pleased when this spring is uh, is over and the weather starts to warm up a little with although it is warm in the day it's very very cold at night and you just can't get your plants out at all yet but we will right well, i'll just press these down Remember, all, as always, tight but not too tight, but my tray is going up and down today, so I'm having a bit of a job. I'll just clean that off now and then they'll be ready for labelling and watering. Let's just take that off a bit. It's very, very lumpy compost and there's lots of bits in it, but I'm afraid that's what we have to work with these days. There you go. Label. I've called them purple bodied bees. Now we're going to fill these hanging baskets. There'll be three of them actually on the front of the cottage. These are new, as you can see. What we find is that this, I think it's like a cotton rope or something they call it, but it's like a grass. And if you're very careful, you'll get maybe three or four seasons out of them. What I find is as soon as you finish with the basket, get it empty and pull the liner out so it's inside out, if I could show you. Pull the liner out like that and then let it dry because what normally happens the bottom bit rots but if you're careful they'll you'll get about four seasons out of them but they are they are a nice basket so all I've done is made a small hole in the bottom of the liner don't if they make holes all around here you'll find that it'll rot the outside of this rather quick so just one hole in the bottom and then we'll fill it with compost up to about this level same compost that should be enough to start there 
remember these are going to hang against the wall so do a back and a front this particular one we're going to put this in the back which is a regal pelagonium very nice we'll put two red trailers this is the ivy leaf trailing geranium in there just go through it and plan it and then I'll do it uh, I got three trailing petunia now petunias this year we've had to buy in because we had a very very cold spell and actually they was against the window of this greenhouse and they got frosted hence that's why we've put this fleece actually on the windows of the greenhouse because the frosts are that, that hard so we use three of those that we've bought, bought in they're pretty so if you can imagine those in so it's going to be a red and pink one this one and then we'll put the bakupa which we've actually bought again because we lost a fair bit and my cuttings that I took last week are doing very well but obviously they can't go in these baskets just yet but they won't be long so we'll put those in as well around the edge of that and that should make a decent basket so let's get on with it it's a 14 inch basket I remember we'll keep it as clean as possible, almost impossible, but we'll try. These won't be rooted much, but they're just rooting down there at last, just, just enough. Take it to the back and then just pack it in. And Diane's picked all these colours, so I can't be blamed for this. Then we'll put these ivy leaf in now if you can see there's very very thick foliage around the bottom so i'm just going to take a bit of that out because you'll find that in that basket these will just rot off anyway and we don't want rot there you go can you see the difference look now it'll go in nicely these will be rooted now they are not so there's the chain, so if you put one there, one there, and one there, no it's two in it, two, we'll put one near the chain and one near the chain again, like that look. Take what bit of compost you got in there, just pack it so it's not rubbing on the front, and just dry out if it can't get to uh, can't get a drink. Same again look. Just take these off. Far too many leaves down there. There you go. These have had sticks in by the nurseryman look to hold them up so we'll take those out. They'll come in useful somewhere. And um, we'll have this one here, I think, just to take that to one side again. There you go. Just like, just like that. Now we've got three trailing petunias. These are Tumbelina candy floss, so they're going to be pink. And the sun's coming out now and it's getting quite warm in here. Well rooted as you can see. I'm going to have to put a handful of compost in there because there's not enough to make the sign. There it is, not like that. And remember we've got to get some bacupa in there as well, so Keep it to keep them loose. Now 
These will go on the side. Remember there will be a wall here. So you need to fill the side to back gap. And if you pop that one in there, there you go, that one go forward, that would be nice at that. And what we should do when we finish them, we'll hang them in here and get the first three away so that when the weather does break and we can put stuff out, these can be the first ones going there. These are quite big bakuka. So we'll put one in there. Matt's going to put four in, so I'm going to put one at the back so it grows through the basket. Let's look at it now. It's coming. There you go. Come on. That's it. We want one in the front if we can. Which there is plenty of room there, not. Now try and let some go forward and some go sideways so that they fill the basket when they go through. One more there and one more at the back, and that's that basket complete. Got to have one here somewhere. Nice, go in there nicely. There you go. Again, space them about a bit so they'll go under and around everywhere. And then one in the back to fill the whole basket. Quite strong these, and nothing really bothers them, and they'll, they can live in full sun. And I'm quite pleased with Bakupa. I do believe it's actually a herb. But uh, I wouldn't recommend eating it. Right, so that's that basket done. What I should do now is buy the handful, to put compost in and make sure it's all settled in level. Then when it's hung and watered, It'll sink a little bit, so we'll leave it a little bit brown. feed it into all those gaps we've left. Just make sure everything's nice and happy. And I always take the chains off because I find that if you just drop them to the side, when you're pulling them up it's tangling in all your plants. So it's just as easy. Take them off hook them on and put a pair of pliers, squeeze them together. Now that's one basket done and we'll do another one with you. It's just a case of getting your pliers and squeezing them too. And then make sure your chains are fed through your plants. Like that. All is safe and we can take off. There we go. And we'll hang it up here on that one. And what we will do, it, once, once it's settled and with water in it, probably this evening, these flowers that are going down, I should take off. 
but we kept them on so Diane could colour coordinate it. Now I'm just setting up for the next basket and Diane's got all the colours she requires into it. It looks like it's going to be pink and white. These are one of the geraniums we overwintered doing quite well it will get quite big size wise so we'll give it plenty of room in the back of the basket it will fill this this well as you can see it's all rooted down nicely Quite a pretty geranium that one. Now the white will go to one side. I won't be setting the whole thing up, I just want to get these two balanced. Um, the same as before, I'll take some of these off. You can see why look, because can you see where the they're rotting already at the bottom? The plant doesn't want those leaves, so it just sheds them. But in your hanging basket, it could start mildewing away. So it's easier just to take them off now. Take them down the compost bin, they'll be fine. They are good plants. We actually bought these from the supermarket and they're as good as any. Again, the nurseryman's put three sticks in to hold them up. I will take those off. It doesn't say where they're from. I've got a bee in the greenhouse. I'll have to let it out in a moment. But we'll just set this one up. Remember to pack the compost up the basket itself so this won't dry out quite so quick. Again, put it that way. Not happy with that leaf, not messing that up. And again, strip these off. There you go. A lot better that now, no? Good plants. And we'll put this one like we did that one over there, we'll put it there, look, but we'll try and get it so it's best size going down and then that'll grow a lot better. Right now, Diane wants these petunias in there. These are Tumbelina Cherry Ripple. Quite pretty. You see they've been bashed about a bit because these have actually travelled in the back of the car. But they'll be fine. Again we'll do three. I just want a bit more compost. I do need to build these sides up before I put the plant in. There you are. Again, cherry ripple. Nice plants. And same again, build the side of the basket and then just pop it in. You can always push the plants away with your hand as you put them in, but they must be in nice and firm. One more then, in there. Looks like this one wanted a drink. Have we got the right one? Yeah. It does want to do it. This compost we're using is quite wet, so it'll soon pick some moisture up. There you go. That's working nicely. And then three of these to finish it. You could actually put some begonias in there, some in busy lizzies or in patients as you want to call them. They would go nicely in there as well. 
but we've used quite a lot of quite strong plants so we know that this basket will fill out but we will show you there you go that's nice that will spread through that will actually root down wherever it touches the compost Two more though. So I'll try and get this one in here. Plenty of room there, not in it goes. Yeah. three bakupas in this one because they're quite strong plants but if you put it in there next to that ivy leaf that'll be fine and then if we pull pull these to the back they will root down and take over and look after the back of the plant planter for you now let's top it up make sure everything's nicely down first so it didn't there we go big hands for make sure it's down and then as you water it will go down now this uh, compost has got about six weeks feed in it and I haven't added anything to it because we do actually feed the hanging baskets once a week so when that six weeks is up we'll be feeding anyway and if the baskets get a lot of wind on them and they're suffering with a bit of stress we'll feed them a bit earlier And that's that one done. Just tap it and then I'll put the chains on and we'll pop it on this hook here. There it is then. I'll take it over there and hang it, hang it on that hook. Should be alright. Yeah. There we go. I'll just show you this pot. This is, uh, I have two of these tubs bought in and I'm going to, when I finish using them for doing these hanging baskets, I'm going to put some holes in the sides at the bottom and I'm going to put two, two pots, one cucumber in each pot. These are the, the uh, Fem spot that we raised from seeing. I need to get those in. I'll probably put these in tomorrow, but I should pop them quite low down so that I can top the compost up. And then the nice thing about cucumbers, these white nodules that you see there will actually put out more roots. So if I put it quite deep, and then as those develop, I shall top the compost up, a bit like you do potatoes, but this will be for a cucumber. These are 25 litre pots, good strong pots, and I shall put some holes in the side and then get those potted tomorrow. In the meantime, I need one more hanging basket for the front, which I'll do with Diane before she goes in to make the video. So that'll be it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Many, many thanks for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And remember to go and have a look at Benny. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next week. Oh, 
want to get all those cabbages in next week, so we'll get on with that. Bye now.